Hey, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Tech Workshop. I'm Joseph, a senior developer advocate with AppSmith. And this week we're going to build a mobile responsive grid layout using view three and a custom widget. Now, ideally this would work just like a list widget where you would have a canvas that you can drag other widgets into and it would just render as a grid instead of a list. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way with custom widgets because all of the code inside that custom widget is isolated from the rest of your app for security reasons. So we're not able to drag other widgets inside of a custom widget, which means we'll have to code each individual component of this grid widget from scratch. So I'm going to use a API with some random user data and we'll create a card view with the user's thumbnail um, their name, email, and then maybe a button to email them. And each one of those components will have to code from scratch rather than using the drag and drop editor. So this is gonna be a little more code heavy than some of the workshops, but this is a highly requested widget, a grid widget, so that you can have a mobile responsive view that'll just auto size, figure out how many rows and columns and look good on any device. So let's get started. First, we'll check out a basic view three custom widget and then we'll pass in some data and make it dynamic and finally add some CSS to make it look like a grid widget. All right, let's check it out. All right, here's a quick preview of what we're gonna build. I've got a grid layout here, and as you can see, it's going to resize the columns to a point. It will shrink them down, and after a certain minimum width, then it's gonna just reduce the number of columns. So now we only have three, and they'll get narrower again to a point, and now we've got two. So this will look good on mobile, and it's able to just resize, and you can set in some min and max width so it always looks good on any device. So the other thing I've set up here is an action from each card, and if I click this email button here, you can see that it drafts a new email to that particular user, putting in their email address here. So it will create that event and pass in the data from the individual card that was clicked, and then you can use that to fire an event outside the custom widget, which could be calling an API, sending an email, whatever else you wanna do that's uh, connected to your other data sources outside the custom widget. All right, so I'm gonna start by dragging in a new custom widget and we will build this from scratch. And if you go to edit the source here, you'll see this templates drop down. And there are built-in templates for vanilla JS, React, and Vue. And this just cycles through that array of tips, which we're passing in from the default model right here. And so you send in some data, and then you can use that to render your component. Now we have a Vue 2 example here. I want to change to this. And you'll see that using this example, it works the same way. It's still just uh, cycling through that array of tips. But if we look at the script here, this one's using view two, and I wanna update this and use view three's new composition API. So we're gonna start from scratch and clear all this out. Same with the CSS and the JS. And then I've got a tutorial written on this already. Just to save some typing, we're gonna come over here to copy a few things, and I'll throw a link in the description so that if you wanna copy from the tutorial, and use the written version, you can do that, save some typing, or you can just fork the template. So I'll have the finished app in the description as well. And if you wanna skip all the coding and just go straight to connecting your data to the grid widget, then we'll have a template for it as well. So first thing we're going to do is just a real basic example using view three. I'm gonna copy this script tag that imports view, and then it's just got a div with an ID and this section of a uh, template. So we're using the mustache syntax with uh, double curly braces and referencing a message variable. And we'll go over to the JavaScript side and I'm gonna copy this basic example here using the view three composition API. So we have an app and inside of this app object, the only thing I'm doing is running this setup function that returns the message. So define the message, return the message, and then mount the app. And so we have to import those two things from view, the create app function that we're using here and the ref to create this reference right here, this variable. And so you can see this is rendering already. We got some text here. And you know, if I 
update this text that it's passing that value as a variable and re-rendering right here and inserting that value. So that's like the most basic example of a Vue 3 custom widget using the Composition API. Now, next what we want to do is pass in some data. And I already have an API set up. We're just going to build on top of this because it's not really part of the lesson here is building a custom widget. And, uh, and so I've got a random user query here. This is using the random user.me API just to give me some data that I can display in the custom widget. So you can build this using your own data with whatever field names. But if you want to follow along, uh, the tutorial has a link for this API. And so you can create this API here like I already have. Um, this is how the data is coming back. It's a object with a results array. And then it's kind of nested. There's the name property with, uh, you know, the nested individual fields there. Pictures also nested to get to the actual uh, thumbnail or the large version or whatever. So I'm just grabbing a few of the columns. There's a, a lot more this API has. But what I want to do is pass this data into the custom widget so that we can start to render those cards based on some dynamic data. Now, first, what I'm going to do is just replace this tips array. And I'm going to put a set of mustache syntax here so I can reference uh, the API. We'll have an empty object here with, I'm just going to put in an array called users, and then we'll reference that API dot data. And inside that data is the results array that we want. Okay. So now I'm providing this custom widget, sorry, the uh, new one, providing this new custom widget here with um, this object that has a user property and all of those values coming back from the random user API. So now if we go back into the custom widget editor here and right here where we're putting the message, instead of the reference being this uh, hard-coded text, I could get just the name from the first record. So let's see, right here at the beginning before the start of this, uh, I think here inside the setup, we'll say const user equals, and then we'll get the AppSmith uh, model users. And if I get the first record using the zero index, then right here, I could say that we want to just reference um, user one. So I'll, I'll use user.name uh, first. How about that? There we go. So that's grabbing the first name of the first user in this data set. Um, and this is letting us grab the data dynamically. It's coming from outside the custom widget, but it's just one data point, one record and uh, one actual, you know, data point from that record. So what we want is something that has multiple data points per record and displays for a whole list of them. So let's go back to the tutorial here just to save a little typing. And let's see, the next thing we wanna do is set this up so that we have this card element. So I'm gonna copy this part of the HTML and then we'll walk through what it's doing here. Okay, and then also the next part of it to connect that, I need a function to go with it. Okay, now if you see what we have going on here, there, there's an entire list of all of these cards that are being rendered, and that's using the V4 directive. So when you've got a div, and then somewhere in here you write V4, and then in the quotes it's the, what do you wanna call the individual element in that array? and then the full array. So for the user and users, we're gonna key them by the email. You just, you put anything in here for the key. And if you don't have a unique value, you can use the index. So we're just using the user parameter. And so we don't need parentheses. If we wanted to get the index, I could put parentheses around here and the index would be the second parameter. And then we could just use the index as the key. And so you can set that up either way. If you don't have one to use, I'm going to keep it as the email. Um, and so what this is doing is creating a new card for each one of those 
values in that users array that we're passing in. Um, let's see, this is getting the users here. And I think right here, we're defining that from the AppSmith. Yeah, so the users are defined here as the AppSmith model.users. Okay, and then the other thing we're doing here with the methods is reloading the data when it changes and re-rendering that grid. So I've defined a method to update the users, which just sets this user, the one that's defined inside the component, to the new users. And what we can do is on model change, when the data coming in from the API changes, we'll run this method and that passes in the AppSmith model. Now the AppSmith model is going to change when we pass in new data, but this value won't change on its own. This is a variable that we declared inside the setup of this component. And just because the source where we got it last time has changed, it's not gonna react instantly. It's not going to update that. So we have to have a method that says, okay, now that the data has changed, trigger this function. And that's what the on model change does from AppSmith. We have the on ready, which is like a uh, document loaded or a uh, uh, document ready. And that will let you wait for those APIs to run in the background so that you've got data to load in. But then now that the component is loaded, the next time it runs, you might see that your, your widget only works on the first load. And so that's why, when you have to add this on model change method and then update that variable here on this side of it, on, on the component side where it's called users because it's changed here, but it hasn't changed in the local definition of it, that one that's tied to the component. So that's most of it now, but it doesn't look like a grid. It Using the V4 directive, it did take this template and render it once for every element in that array. Uh, and, and we're seeing a whole list of them here, so that much is working. But to make this an actual responsive grid, we need some CSS. So let's go back to the template here, tutorial rather. Uh, and I've got a little bit of CSS here that will help out with that. So if we paste this in the CSS side here, now we've got some padding around it, rounded corners and everything, and it's laid out like a card view. So this is a couple pieces here. You gotta have the grid container with the display type set to grid. So the outer container for this entire grid, it's display type is grid. Here's where you can set that gap. So you can see they're pretty spaced and now they're real tight there. Um, and then where do you want the breakpoints? And so you can set the, um, the grid columns here. It's autofill, so it's like going to the max width and then you've got a min width of 250 picks so that it won't uh, cut the name short here. And as I resize this down, you can see it's gone to two cards and then down to one. Okay, so we've got the mobile responsiveness working. Now let's work on the interaction, like to be able to click one of these and actually trigger an event outside of the custom widget. First, we'll add a button to each card and you can make it like an email button, you know, to uh, grab this person's email and draft a new email. So I'm going to update that HTML for the individual card with this button. And all this is gonna do is put a button on the layout and then have a click event to trigger an email. It's gonna run a function called trigger email. So we'll go back to the HTML here. And after the phone, I'm gonna add the button. And now this doesn't have a function yet. It's looking for a function named trigger email. So we'll come back here to the methods and add that. Uh, I've got an updated version here. I think we just want to put that inside the app. Yeah, we're only replacing the const app. There we go. Okay, so now this button will run a function called trigger event. That function here is telling the rest of AppSmith to run something called send email. So inside the custom widget, this button is looking for a function called trigger email. Here's that function and what it does is triggers an event called send email. So the last piece of this is that we need a function or rather an event outside the custom widget and we name that send email and then do something with this email that we're passing to it. 
So if we go back to the main editor now, and on the events, you'll see this default one, this on reset click. This was part of that tips click through next array thing that the uh, custom widget comes with, the default code. So you can either delete this or just modify it. I want to call it send email so that we can reuse this one and then change the show alert here. So instead of showing an alert, I'm going to use navigate to. I want to go to a specific URL and I'm going to set it to new window so it doesn't take over this page of the app here. And then we'll use the mail to protocol. So you can set this to mail to, and then in here, you'll also have a variable. So I'm going to wrap all of this in the double curly braces, make that part of it a string. And then we want to add to this, um, that email address. And that variable is going to be called email. Uh, and I need that parameter in there as well. The question mark to equals and then email. And I'm adding a fallback value just in case that particular user doesn't have an email so that it doesn't get an error here trying to add undefined. So let's see what happens. We'll click one of these and it has fired the event. It kept the same page though. I wanted to make it a new page. I think I didn't save that setting here. Yeah, we want to use new window. Okay, so this should work now. It's, it's actually grabbing the individual data from each card and passing that to the button on click so that you can draft a new email to that user. So I think that's everything I want to show for this week. We went over how to use Vue in a custom widget. We're using the new Vue 3 composition API, which works great for custom widgets. And we're able to pass data in and actually have the grid update when that data changes, as well as fire events and integrate with actions outside of the custom widget. So I hope this has been helpful. That's it for this week. If you have any questions on this one or ideas for future workshops, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next week.